Yep, what up? You know what it is, baby? It's DJ Sus1, the feature presentation. I got my co-host Kenya in the building with me. What's going on? Oh, I'm happy to be here with our guest today. For the feature presentation podcast, we're blessed with um, incredible actress, beautiful. She's in a um, show right now that's absolutely amazing. We got the privilege of seeing a few episodes. Um, she's standing by um, right next to Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, yeah. You want to introduce yourself? You want to introduce her? Oh, hi. Do I have to introduce myself? You can. Oh, hi, I'm Meta Golding. Hello. <laughs> hi. Nice. And Meta, this is your first official podcast. This is my very first official podcast. Really? Yes. So please be gentle and kind. You have to treat me like I right, only erase some of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but this is my 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 very first time being on a podcast, and I feel very honored to have. It with you. Well, today yeah. we're going to focus on Rabbit Hole. We want you to come back so we can focus on a lot of other things in your career. Okay. But talk to us about Rabbit Hole, like because it's absolutely a, a, like it's amazing. It's based on manipulation, mm -hmm. and it's based off of um, lies and deceit in corporate America. Yes. And it's, it sounds like you know some of the corporations I work for today. So <laughs> <laughs> describe the um, um, show. Well, it you know we're in this technology technology we're in the age of technology mm -hmm. and i think the show um is talking about the effect of that on us as human beings it, um it's takes place in the world of corporate espionage and keeper sutherland is the lead and i'm the female lead and um he plays a a corporate spy who manipulates data and as we all know because we live in this technological age our data when we pick up the phone when we're on the internet is constantly being mined and used to manipulate us and that's the world that the show takes place in and so um yeah that's what it is how would you describe your character Haley mm -hmm. is she would you say she's because you know I know this show flips so many times would you say she's an honest individual she a manipulative individual what is her relationship um, with um, Keith's um, character, just to uh, say John Weir. Yeah, um, John Weir. Yeah. So Haley, uh, she she's not dishonest, but she's not honest. Um, <laughs> Sounds she, like my exes. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the question. It's like how how well do you know someone? Mm -hmm. And everybody has secrets. And what was so fascinating about the character is that she seems like a regular, regular lawyer professional woman who is trying to online date and meets this man and her life blows up, but she's not actually who she seems. She's not an innocent bystander. Um, and as the series unfolds, you'll find out many different things. I mean, I'll just say this, it's in the world of espionage. Yes. So, um, which is fascinating to play as an, as an actor because it's so multi-layered, you know? Definitely. So you get the script for the first time mm -hmm. and you're reading through it. Mm -hmm. Was it what you initially thought? No. Um, so I get the script for the first time. And as you'll see from the first episode, I thought it was like, you know, like a Kiefer Sutherland dating situation, you know, like I was like, OK, love interest. Here we go. OK, Kiefer. OK. Um, and then I keep reading the script because it's a real page turner. And I'm like, oh, it's not. That's just the in like. That's just how you enter it. Like you enter it, or from my character's perspective, you kind of enter it thinking it might be like a, a romantic vibe, but it completely blows up. So I, I just couldn't believe like what was going on. And also I, I read it during the pandemic and there were so many conspiracy theories that were happening and the show is about conspiracy theories. So I just was surprised at... Um, at what the, sh the the bigger issues of the show were tapping into because it was stuff that I just naturally am interested in. Yeah. I was about to ask you that. I was about to say, are you into conspiracy theories before this show? And what kind of conspiracies, conspiracy theories were you into that, that excited you to be like, oh, wow, I got to do this? Well, it's not that I'm into conspiracy theories, but, you know, like, where did, you know, COVID come from? Like, what is, you know... American corporations, like, what are they doing around the world? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that those are conspiracy theories, but there are definitely a lot of theories about society and corporations and the flow of money 
and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's a whole nother podcast episode. <laughs> it, is, it is. But yeah, so if you're interested in those kind of things, yes. I think it's it's a show that will peak those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. And this is a different type of project for Kiefer too, because typically like he's legendary and has played like kind of a... Um, American like uh, hero hero yeah yeah. Uh, yeah it is I mean he's playing someone who's dealing with mental illness we don't know if it's paranoia you know I don't know if you guys have like a cut I know I do excuse, I, if my family is listening to the, to this I'm not talking about you but I do <laughs> I do know some people who you don't know if it's they're just paranoid or if it's a mental illness so he's playing somebody who's dealing with that but also he was always the hunter you know and now he's playing the hunted um even though it's still in the same kind of thriller action genre it's a different it's a different side of him yeah how is it working with Keith? for me so legendary how, and how did how was the selection for you for this role like did you meet him or like explain the whole entire process so um i was working on something else mm -hmm. and um i was in atlanta it was still the pandemic and my agents were like, oh, Kiefer Sutherland's doing this show, da 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 da. Um, and they sent me the script. And like I said, I was like, okay, date and thing. And then it wasn't. But I was really busy. Um, I was playing a schizophrenic. So I was just really in my process. And I was like, I don't have time right now. And they kept badgering me, badgering me, badgering me. And then I, I really just laid it down, just, you know, put it out. And I thank my, my team because I was just a little too distracted with what I was going into, uh, but I loved the script. Um, they liked my tape and they said, come in and do a chemistry read with Kiefer. And this was when, I don't think I'd been in person with with people in a couple years, like letter, literally an audit, like I had to COVID test, all these things and um, just came in and nice to meet you. And we just had this immediate, I guess chemistry or we just went at like it was the first time I met him it, this the scene was a fight and we just I, we just fought really well together I guess wow. <laughs> and um it was just kind of that that was it yeah what is a chemistry test like uh well you you go in you're like okay I I, I gotta meet this person and I gotta audition with this person and I've it's it, you know, as an actor, I'm always just trying to stay in character, but I also know as a, that, that in the scenes, these two people have this connection. And so, I don't know, you can't really fake it. You just either have it with, you know, when you meet a friend mm -hmm. or just somebody that you just vibe with, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing. Like, but it's perfect. Like it's, you know, hello, nice to meet you. And then they call action and there's either magic or there isn't. Right. And I don't know how to fake it, how to fake it or yeah. how that happens or, or anything. Hmm. Well, speaking of fighting very well, I, she looked at me like, yo, what were you about to ask? <laughs> you studied Krav Maga. Yeah. for this, which is absolutely amazing. I was sitting here saying, she doesn't feel like she's intimidating. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because people who know Krav Maga have a certain walk to them. They have a certain energy. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that they could whip some ass. So basically, I guess what I'm asking is, how was the Krav Maga process? How did you um, train? And can you whip some ass right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I went to a Krav Maga uh, studio in because we shot in Toronto. And I trained with a whole bunch of Krav Maga people and strike there's a whole community Krav Maga is uh Israeli self-defense technique yeah, yeah. which I think is awesome especially for women to mm. know this self-defense because it teaches you how to how to it's not just more for real life situations yeah like, it's not like you know karate you might not use it as much as Krav Maga mm -hmm. right as, from what I understand yeah, it's for real life. If somebody's attacking you, how to stop them and get out of the situation. Like literally how to poke somebody's eye, like where the points are in somebody's body that you can just put them down. So it's super intense, but it's really fun. Um, I, I also, there was the stunt team that helped me a lot, but like I was sore the whole time. I really worked very hard, um, but... I don't know. Every job you kind of pick up new skills, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I'm 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 glad I. I what have was that. your fighting knowledge before? I'm sorry, because going a whole different direction. What was your fighting knowledge before 
These Krav Maga classes. Well, you know, a certain somebody was in the Hunger Games, and That's I true. was Enobaria. I don't know if you know who she is, but Enobaria's a badass. So I, but this is a while ago. This is a decade ago. So yeah. I, I learned that stunt team. They, um, it the it. Chad's what is Chad's last name? I can't remember Chad's last name, but he's now the director of the John Wick mm. films. He used to be Keanu's um, stunt double in The Matrix. Okay. So that team that did uh, all of the fighting in The Matrix, which is some of the best fighting scenes ever. Absolutely, I feel like they changed the game in terms of how action is filmed. Um, that's who trained me. For that, but that was a that was a while ago. But I've always nice. been physical. But um, it's just a different. It's a dirt, Krav Maga is like they teach you how to fight dirty, mm. um, which you kind of need yeah. on the on the street in life. In life, yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> well, no, because you as a woman you have to be strong. We have to do so many different things that men like just don't have to do a lot of the time. Absolutely. And so I feel like disciplines like that really help us, yes. right? To empower us and give us confidence and take control of a situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of women and being a woman of color, I know you come from a Haitian background. I do. Nice. So how does that feel to represent your culture in this industry with your craft? Um, well, you know, I think that it is about time. Um, I think that I'm so grateful to be a uh, part of this industry. I'm so grateful to represent, but at the same time, I think it's, it's almost bittersweet because I'm like the fact that it, we even have to say like, oh, wow, you get to represent, like it should just be. Mm. So, um, so yeah, that's good. That's good. How can, um, do you remember the Will Smith movie enemy of the state with Gene Hackman? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't. Yes, yes. What well, was a movie based off of technology and uh, the way it affects our, you know, real life situations? And I just want to know, how, like, especially compared to a movie like that, how can you explain that this show relates to real life when it comes to technology and when it comes to, you know, be, being aware of your what's going on? Like, you can't even talk into an iPhone right now without it giving you ads based off of the conversation you just had. Absolutely. So, so this whole entire show is based off of, you know, besides manipulation and spies and people not being who they, they really saying they are uh -huh. it's based off of you know watched you know the technology threats in the technology so how can yeah. you say it relates to real life well um i'll just say this so in the 80s during the cold war it was america versus russia right mm -hmm. and that was like all the spy movies and all were, were about that dynamic but then now today instead of it being another country it's technology versus people and i think that you know we're all like i i can't at my hotel i can't i have to use my cell phone to get the menu for room service or whatever so they're always collecting data every time you use your cell phone you're being somebody's buying your data so that they can send you you know advertisement so it completely relates to our everyday life um and also just being online. Anytime we go online, the little things except cookies, that's we're by we're 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 getting your information. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely being like reconditioned into this new world that we're yeah. in. Yeah. So I mean, I guess it's been twenty five years that that's been happening, I mm. think. All right. But now it just seems like it's more and more and more. And I mean it's probably not gonna change, but I just think it's good to, you know, be aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that you're going to get a lot of that, a taste of that type of technology threat in this show. Um, Paramount Plus, mm -hmm. um, two episodes is released right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be releasing every... Uh, every Sunday. So March 26th on Paramount Plus, we have two episodes. And then they're, the way it, it, every Sunday, there's going to be a new episode and there's going to be eight episodes. Is yes. Oh, I'm ahead. sorry. I was, it's very suspenseful, too. Like, it's very, like, moving. Yeah, right? it so moves. Yeah, it moves. So just, like, how were you able to kind of keep up with those scene changes and, like, the movement and the pace of what was going on? Um, yeah, it's fast paced. It's, uh, you know, we met, like, explosions and fights and love scenes and... Um, it's just exciting, you know? It's, it, for me, it was just, like, this is what I live for, it, is this kind of just fast-paced, and the characters, 
you get to go from A to Z. It's it was just so much fun. We had so much. I was fun. just about to ask you, based off all your acting experiences, was this one of the top experiences for you? Um. Yeah. I'm yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> Paramount Plus people are here. <laughs> no, but you know, you know, it's a little bit like asking about like who's your favorite kid. You yeah. know, because I, I I don't want to like talk bad. Some about people my... would be like Josh. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it was one of my funnest times. And I mean, I also think it was we shot it in the pandemic, so it, I was coming out of a a place where I was isolated and just yeah. to be back in community and to be back like telling stories and to be back, you know, it's just so fun. Is am- and our directors are amazing. They're they're this they're film people. They did um Crazy Stupid Love. Mm. They did a film called Focus. They're also from the comedy world, Bad Santa. Mm. Um, and they did uh, the, they're the executive producers of This Is Us. So they kind of have like heart and but but the way they shot it was so cinematic. Uh, we shot it like a movie, like a eight episode, like an eight hour movie. When you see it, the you know it's not. It, it's just shot. If you're a cinema lover. Um, it's it's a great watch from that perspective because it's based on a lot of uh, the '70s espionage films. Um, if you're a film fan, I think you'll you'll get okay. into I it. I think this is what this is about. This whole yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. So what what what's next for Meta in the in the um, in your in your world? What's next besides rabbit holes? Is there anything else coming up? Um, just I mean, after this, I just need to like take a break for a minute. Really? Yeah. A traveling? Um, yeah, I I want to go to Paris. Paris, darling. I mean you've been to Paris, right? I have. Oh, okay. But I wanna go I wanna go back. All right, cool. Have you been to Paris? Yeah, of course, plenty of times. And I DJ'd out there a bunch of times. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's super it's colder than New York in the winter, but it's oh. beautiful and the food's good. Yeah. I have not been to Paris. You, well, maybe well, we need to do a girls' trip or that something. That would be fun. <laughs> All right, well, let's get back to Rabbit Hole. Rabbit Hole <laughs> right now, and we're going to plan the Paris trip for you guys. Um, Rabbit Hole, once again, the first two episodes is out right now. Yes. Um, it's released every Sunday, um, a new episode, and it's on Paramount+. Plus. And I just appreciate you for coming to the podcast, man, because we just launched this a month ago. Congratulations. This is so exciting. Thank you. I, I really love it, man, because I have a love... Um, for film in general, you know, I wish I could watch all movies, but you know, I can only watch as much as I can. What's your favorite movie? Oh, there's not, there's too many. What, movies one of your favorite movies? This is gonna sound corny. I really like horror movies from the '80s. Oh, okay. So I know this is kind of weird to say because it's not like it's not like these big special effect blockbuster movies. You but like what you like. New, mm-hmm. So New Line Cinema, not to bring up another company, was built off of the popularity of Freddy Krueger, and I oh. really liked The Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my favorite movies I keep, Ooh, the original one. I can't, ha- like, I'm so delicate with horror movies, I get so scared. I'm Are the same serious? way. Really? Yeah. I, Guys, I we're do. adults here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, and I'm total what? opposite. Like, my favorite movie is Far and Away with Tom Cruise and Aww. Nicole Kidman. How so can like, you say a favorite movie is a million movies out? I, that's the one I can watch over and over and over again that, like, will never get played out for me. Like, I have other ones that I like, but, like, for me, I always like that one. All right, well, I so. know Rabbit Hole's a thriller, but can we see you in a horror movie since you are so scared? Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably. I'd probably be great in a horror movie because I really get scared. But you wouldn't watch your own movie? No. <laughs> no. All right, guys. Let's close this down. Rabbit Hole. Make sure you go watch it. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. Story. Um, action. Um what, what else can we say about it? A little romance in there. Yeah. yeah. A little humor. Yeah, there is a little humor. He has, he's very sarcastic. Mm-hmm. It's a good blend of everything, keeps, keeps I character. feel like. Yeah. All oh, the good. things that you want to be entertained with. Good. Yay. All right. Is there anything that you want to tell us about what's coming up that they're going to see? Um, Just tell us the whole entire plot. <laughs> um, you're going to see suspense and um, you're going to see a great... Uh, espionage thriller that's about technology and um, it's a mixed tone so there's Charles Dance is in it if you're if you watch Game of Thrones there's excellent mm. actors we've got great guest stars and um, I hope you check it out they are going to check it out we appreciate you for coming through alright yeah yes. thank you um, it's the feature presentation podcast like we said rabbit hole go check it out immediately on Paramount Plus